Hello and welcome back and that's right today we want to return to the subject of those failing SanDisk Extreme Pro external SSDs. A few more things have happened since my last video a month ago and again it will be linked in the description where we went through a lot of what was going on with these as well as alluding to other stuff that's happened with WD over the last few years as well as the article that is linked below that I have updated with even more information everything we're going to cover today. But ultimately uh, for those that need a quick recap this is about SSDs in uh, from SanDisk that we regularly see on offer like this one here that started failing. Whether this was that the drives were unmounting themselves or that the file system had collapsed, ultimately people were losing data and this started getting a lot of traction online on websites like Reddit which then led to high profile news websites like Ars Technica and uh, The Verge which had some in-house impact as well with colleagues there. People stating they were losing data they were losing drives and this was becoming untenable and you couldn't really pursue warranty on that because this was still the drive for some reason it wasn't counting as warranty concerns there but eventually wd after periods of silence started coming around to say yeah there's a firmware problem yeah you got to update so you could go ahead and download a newer firmware which would apparently res resolve the issue though i would state even though there are guides on the updates there and i'm going via the right portal this is the drive you're seeing me waving around on screen here that is the serial number very very uh, very uh, faintly there on the base i went ahead i entered it into uh, their field here i click submit with the os that is the correct serial number there for those that need to see it if you need to see it again on screen it's 100 the correct serial number and According to this page, I've got the serial number wrong. That's not inspiring, you know what I mean? But still, nonetheless, users have been impacted by this so much. So, in fact, that we're working with a, a company at the moment called Ease US, who run a data recovery software here, and they're extending a promotion right now to anyone that's been impacted by this, where you can email them. I believe their email address is here. You can go ahead and contact them email that address there and you get a free pro version of their license now again i'm doing another video with them on this uh recovering from sandisk drives but again it's real easy software you can see on the drive you get a free license if you're a user and on top of that you can try and test the files for free there's no guarantee that it's going to recover the date but still nonetheless at least you've got an option there if you have been impacted and in the meantime sandisk are gonna to have to replace a lot of these drives for people and at the moment as you'll see later on in the video things have got quite serious for a lot of users but that's really where we're up to right now so what about from this point what about you know users that you know may or may not have still been impacted by this that's right the story didn't end with that previous video and things have continued moving forward quite rapidly first and foremost we're seeing numerous reports online of users stating that they applied the update and their drives were still dismounting there and some people state that they tried to use um, software like disk drill to varying levels of effect but on top of that with all of these impacted users when you go to the sandisk forums the story ain't over look at all of these forum posts uh, updated in august here now again these aren't ones that have been posted in august they have seen updates since but people have lost data some users stating they can't format the drive some users stating the dismount continues some of these are much older posts here that clearly people have gone into but still nonetheless there's varying levels of information there that state that this has not stopped impacting people whether it is they're buying new drives which need the firmware update and therefore users aren't aware so in that scenario surely they need to force a recall of these drives as they're just not fit for purpose but on top of that when you look at websites like the verge the verge um who were impacted by this remember that article i mentioned earlier on well uh, the verge there they got the replacement drive and the replacement drive failed this replacement drive that they lost 3tb on a 4tb drive it's the supposedly safe replacement that WD sent them, which again is a PR disaster. Um, so ultimately, you know, we can see lots of indications online that clearly show that this is not a problem that's going away. So much so, of course, that now the question of lawsuits has started to arrive. Let's get litigious. And according to this Ask Technica article, we can see more and more. There are up to three different claimants right now who are pursuing. These are three 
different individual lawsuits. Now, these are in early stages, but still nonetheless, this can't be good. There's even websites like this one, legalscoops.com, which are now canvassing users, you know, and no win, no fee type stuff, canvassing users for, who have been impacted by this or if you have lost data. When you reach this point, SanDisk, you are in trouble. Now, these three lawsuits, although they are completely separate lawsuits, unsurprisingly, they're all very much of the same caliber. Again, once again, thanks so much to the websites that will be linked in the description where they've gone and found a lot of these resources. But first and foremost, when you look at the first one, this is Nathan Crumb. This is one I think is featured on a lot more websites than anything else. And it comes down to anti um, uh, breaks of the Consumer Act. The idea that when you buy a product that needs to be fit for purpose and a drive to store data that doesn't store the data and ultimately leads to the loss of data is not providing the service that it is supposed to. It's a very, very detailed report here that again, I've linked to below. You can go through all of them. Another one, this was Matthew Perrin and uh, Brian Bayerl. A much more detailed summary, at least in terms of their process and ultimately yes one could argue about backups more on that later on but when they started rolling out these drives when people were already reporting failures and people were already stating these issues that sandisk were not appropriately responding to that leading to users unwittingly losing data again a lot of this goes into a lot more details uh, along the bottom and uh, again a quote being thrown around of course uh, the ssd becomes su um, become uh, suddenly becomes worthless that's getting thrown around a lot uh, and finally this last one with sandisk Saif Jaffrey. Uh, this one goes into a lot more detail about the uh, defective nature of the drive itself, but ultimately all three lawsuits come down to the same thing. A drive that is not fit for purpose and SanDisk not doing enough to alert users or at least recalling these drives or alerting every single user that they have a drive that is not fit for purpose there. That's what these all allege. Now, not to get all caught of public opinion here, but there are users, be it on some of the articles that I've talked about earlier on, as well as my own video below in the comments and that article I alluded to earlier, there are users out there who, rather than seeing this as a failing on Sandis part, are saying, oh, well, you should have a backup for your data. You shouldn't treat it as, you know, the only source of your data. And there is an element of truth to that. But still, nonetheless, if you had two of these drives, and if we go back to that support there, we can see some users had stacks of these drives on the go. And when you have stacks of these drives on the go, you could have had multiple backups. And if multiple drives fail, you're still relying on a data storage product there. So it's not fair to say that, you know, if this drive fails, the onus is on you for not having another drive when some users have had multiple of these drives running as backups for multiple team members or, you know, two or more drives to an individual user for their backups and it all failing there. That's just not on. Now, these lawsuits related to this kind of undisclosed or at least not loudly disclosed flaw on these drives, whether it is units that were still at retail during those sales or just not telling users who may be relying on these devices, you know, loudly enough for them to do something about it. These lawsuits are still very much in their early stages, and I don't think it's just going to be these three. Now, do you remember when WD was hit by the SMR business there? The, the drives not being sold as arguably as detailed and as honestly as they could be with users buying SMR drives without being properly told they were shooting with magnetic recording? That lawsuit took years, and the eventual payout for users impacted by it was pretty small a lot of people would agree now how this will roll with sandisk i think will be a slightly different tale notwithstanding we aren't talking about the mis-selling of what a drive is built with they're not talking about the internal ssd in here being a slightly different nand quality we're talking about a drive where lots of these have been sold and the they're not storing data or at least they're not storing data in an integral fashion when they do drop from the file system, when they do drop and be unmounted by it, and therefore people thinking they had a backup drive that didn't back up. So I think this lawsuit, you can understand why users' uh, lawsuit and websites, again, like uh, Legal Scoops, is being a little bit more, shall we say, advantageous about canvassing for more people that have been affected by this. And Sandisk, again, their responses are not very loud. They're not very widespread. And even now, we can probably go online. And if we quickly look at Amazon, spell Amazon correctly, maybe. If we look up a SanDisk, do we look at it live? SanDisk 4TB Extreme 
Pro SSD, we can presumably still buy these SSDs right now. And again, if these have got the new firmware update on them, fine. But the problem is, I don't know if it's got the firmware update. And because they've not been that loud about it, I am not convinced I want to buy this drive. And I'm someone that over the years has really championed these drives. Um, so a full product recall is what SanDisk should have done. Or at the very least done it at the retail level and withdrawn them. Not at the height of these issues. Market these drives exceedingly well priced during uh, Amazon's Prime Day event. Something we talked about before. But again... If you have a SanDisk Extreme Pro SSD in your possession, head over to the link in the description and check that firmware. Although just be aware that much like me testing my SSD serial there, for some reason, it doesn't always go through, but you can download the firmware updates directly if you wish, and then use the tools to install them. And of course, as mentioned, we've got an updated video on this very, very soon with these US, but email them on that email address and get a free version of the Pro software. You will need to do the email. There isn't a link on their site to do it, but after that, then you can scan even drives that have got the lost partition. You can find it, issue a recovery, see previews. It's not guaranteed, but at least you've got an option there. But ultimately... SanDisk, the ball's in your court, mate. You're being pursued by companies right now. You've clearly dropped the ball here, and some louder public statements would not go amiss. Hopefully, I don't have to make another video on this subject, but we'll have to wait and see. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Watch the previous video for more information. The link in the uh, description to this article that will be updated after this. And of course, links to every other resource I've talked about today. They will all be there for you to check out. I recommend you give them a look. Again, if you were impacted, maybe look at uh, legal scoops. I don't, you know, I'm not endorsing them, but maybe try and see if there is any means for you to get some payback for this. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic weekend and I'll see you next time.